I just finished a live session with our VLS Academy members talking about the transition. Had a ton of great questions, but I narrowed it down to my top three. Matter of fact, got into a pretty good debate about why a slower backswing actually could kill your distance. I got a lot to cover, so let's get going. So the third most popular question came from Jim, and his question was, Todd, can a poor transition cause over the top or coming over the top? And the short answer to that is, of course it can. Now, why is that? And more importantly, how do we fix it? Well, when we have a poor transition, and we're talking about the move from the top to start the downswing, and that's where an over the top move comes from, even if the golfer has the club in a good spot, but the transition is poor, they can go out and across. Now, if you're doing that, you're probably seeing shots off the toe, you're probably seeing very little compression of the golf ball, like you're not taking a divot, and also if you're a right-handed golfer, it's probably weak and to the right. So the question becomes, if I have a poor transition and I'm coming over the top, how do I fix it? Well, let me share with you a couple little drills that you can do. So first of all, I got my golf glove right here, right? So when I'm set in there, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my golf glove right here, and if I take the club to the top, watch the glove right here, and I spin my hips, okay, which is what a lot of traditional coaching would tell us. Hey, you wanna create more club head speed? Spin the hips, okay. When the hips spin, notice where the glove goes? It goes back and it goes away from the target. Let me go ahead and do it from down the line here. So I'm set in here, I got a good position at the top, but if I spin the hips too early, okay, the club goes out and across. Now, how do we fix that? Well, let me show you what we want to see, because this is where it's really important to understand what's the first thing that starts the transition? What starts the downswing? And in our opinion, we write it right here in the bad lie in the book, it should be a bump of the hip. So let's go back to the glove. Here we, and I'm gonna give you a drill then to kind of practice this and work on it. So here we go, I'm at the top, watch the glove. The first move should be for the glove to bump towards the lead foot or towards the target. Everybody see that? See where the glove is at? Okay, and so if you're videotaping your own swing, take an extra glove, put it in your lead pocket, for me, my left pocket, and just go ahead and hit some shots and see where that glove moves initially in the transition. If it moves away from the target, you're probably gonna come over the top. If it moves towards the target, you're probably gonna drop it into the slot. Now, what's the drill that you can do for that? Very simple. We've included it in a lot of our videos. As a matter of fact, it's in the bad lie. So we call it our step drill. So you take your regular setup, bring your lead foot back to your trail foot, swing the club up, and as you start the transition, go ahead and step forward. Everybody see how I'm doing that? So I swing it up and I step. Now as I step, where does the glove go? Boom, it goes towards the target, right? And that's how we can force that movement of bumping the hips. When the hips bump in the transition, no longer will you go over the top, you'll drop it to the inside. The second most popular question that we got came from James, and that is, hey Todd, can a sway cause a poor transition? Once again, the answer is yes, it definitely can. So let's talk about what a sway is, and more importantly, why you come here, how do you fix it? So a sway, and we get this question a lot, it's one of the most popular questions we get at VLS Academy and here at US Golf TV. A sway is when the weight moves to the outside of the trail foot. Okay, so I'm a right-handed golfer, and I'm set in here, and you know if you've followed any of the vertical line swing system, and you've read the book, The Bad Lie, and all those types of things, <clears throat> that we like to start with a 60-40 split. 60% weight on the lead foot, 40% on the trail. Now, early in the takeaway, we wanna move that pressure. We wanna move that weight to the trail foot. Now, here's the key. If the weight stays on the inside of the trail foot, like I'm demonstrating here, that is money. No bad transition from that spot and no sway. However, if we move the weight towards the trail foot and it goes to the outside of the foot, okay, see that? That would be a sway and that is gonna probably cause you to have a poor transition. So can a sway cause a poor transition? Yes, it can. The key is to make sure as you shift the weight, 
you stay to the inside of the trail foot. Now, how can you work on that? Two things. Number one, and this is, this is one of the core concepts of the vertical line swing, and that is to let the trail knee release a little bit. Let me demonstrate, and I'm going to give you a drill for it. And then we're going to talk about the number one thing. It actually was a little bit of a debate, but it was a really good one. So here we go. On the sway, when the trail knee releases a little bit, that allows the hips to turn. It allows the trail leg to get a little bit longer or taller, whatever word you want to use. And when you do that, that instinctively moves weight to the inside of the foot. Okay, so that would be the first thing that I would look for is make sure that the trail knee is releasing. Now, if you want to practice that, pretty simple. We're going to actually do a little bit of the reverse of the first drill that I showed you. So what you're going to do is go and take your setup. You can do this even without a golf ball. Okay, put your feet together, all right? And what you're going to do is as you swing the club back and away from the golf ball, you're going to just step away from the golf ball, right? So here I am, I'm set up. I'm just going to make a practice thing. I'm going to step and swing to the top and then go ahead and swing through. Now, why does this work? Such a simple way to train this because when we step innately, subconsciously, when we step, we want to be in balance. We would never naturally or intentionally step and move our way to the outside of our trail foot because we would twist our ankle, right? When we plant a foot, any direction, the body wants to find balance. It wants to keep the weight in the proper spot. So when we step to the right or away from the target for a right-handed golfer, you instinctively will land and be on the inside of the trail foot. So can a sway cause a poor transition as James asked? The short answer is yes. Those are a couple of ways to look at it. Question number one. The most debated part of the conversation that we had in the live session as part of our VLS Academy is, should we have a slow backswing? Can a backswing that's too fast cause a poor transition? The answer to that is no. I know that's a little bit different than what you might have heard before, but we believe that the answer to that is no. Most of the students we see, especially those of you out there who are experienced golfers, you know who you are. We love hearing where you're from. Put that in the chat. We also love hearing how old you are. Don't be afraid to put that in the chat because you're not old. You're experienced, right? But what we find with experienced golfers is because they've been told so much that they need to swing slow that their backswing is too slow. And what happens when the backswing is too slow? Well, the transition gets too quick. Because if I'm hitting a driver, let me go ahead and grab my Maxvert driver. If I'm hitting my Maxvert driver, and I want to hit this, let's say for sake of discussion, 225 yards. Arbitrarily pick that number out there. I know that I've got to get the Maxvert going a certain speed at the moment of impact to get that ball to travel 225 yards. Okay. In order to do that, I have a couple constraints. I have the length of my swing, okay, and I also have a certain amount of time, right? And so if I take that and I go really slow, the only way to get that going really fast is to have a very quick transition. However, if I get the club head, if I get the max vert moving quicker, earlier, now I have leverage, now I have time to keep that club moving quickly into impact. All right, so I'm going to give you a drill to actually work on that. We call it the counter back swing sequence. We, we did this in one of our other live sessions as part of the VLS Academy, but here's how it works. What you're going to do, and you can do this with a driver. It's one of the most fun drills to do with your driver. So what I want you to do is I'm going to demonstrate like I'm looking at you. Okay, you're the target. I'm going to take my feet and I'm going to put them to, well, matter of fact, let me scratch that. Let's just go standard stance. All right, and what you're going to do is take the club and put it in front of you. See how it's looking at you at the camera here? And what you're going to do is just take it all the way back and up and then go ahead and swing it through and hit a shot. So let me do it in slow motion. And then I'm going to give you the advanced version of this in just a second. All right, so here we go. Club in front, back, and through. Now, why does that work? 
because it works because when you put the club in front, number one is you make the swing naturally longer because it's starting here. It's not starting here, right? So the swing is longer, okay? But also I get momentum. I get the momentum of the club swinging and speeding up. Now, if you want to do an advanced version of that, okay, what you can do is put your feet together, put the club in front, swing it back and up, and then step forward as you hit it. Let me go ahead and do it again, okay? We covered this in the academy a little bit ago. We call it the counter back swing sequence. Here it is, swing it back and step, and then through. So the transition is one of the most important parts of the golf swing. Should the backswing be faster or slower? The answer is it should be faster if you want to have a good transition and you want to hit the golf ball a long ways. These three questions are the top three questions that I got in our last live session. Hopefully they improve your transition and in return improve your golf game.